up? What's up? Happy Monday. Live. Happy Monday. I'm feeling fan freaking fantastic. How are you feeling, sis? I got up, I fed the plants, integrated the new plants, cleaned the house. I, I, I accomplished a lot today. Now I'm ready to work with y'all. I made time for everything today. I made time for everything today. Here. Come on in here. Ooh, I tell you, this skin is this skin is skinning. This skin is skin is skinning. Can't tell me this is 55. This 55? This 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 face been on 50, it's been on earth for 55 years. Boy, that excites me. That excites me. Just gets better and better. Just gets better and better. That's all I can say. Hi, you're new to my page. Welcome. So, tap the screen, share the live. Type your blood type in the comments. Type your blood type in the comments. I hope y'all all see the improvements in your skin. Because remember, you are what you eat. The whole world can see what you eat on your face. The whole world can see what you eat on your face. I don't know nothing about no unity tea. Are you talking about unicity? I don't, I don't promote nobody's business but my business. I mind my business. Period. If I didn't create it, I don't know nothing about it. No shade, but I don't know them. I don't know nothing about them people. So I am Mama Trey and I teach you how to eat according to your blood type in order to reverse disease. We are going to go over all four blood types. I'm going to tell you what it is that you're prone to based on your blood type. What foods are triggering those ailments and what foods can reverse them? Okay? No shade, but... Okay? I don't get paid to endorse nobody. Okay? You know how you got a bunch of influencers? I'm not an influencer. I don't get, I don't get paid to promote brands to people. I refuse. I get people hitting me up all the time in my DMs that want me to collaborate or endorse or market their shit and I say no thank you because every time I've seen any collaborations on TikTok it always ends badly okay you know I don't need I don't need to collaborate with nobody if somebody's hitting me up to collaborate then they need me more than I need them you feel me so no thank you That never ends well. Next thing you know, it's a bunch of beef on the internet. I don't, I don't do beef on the internet. If I can't do beef in real life, I'm not doing it on the internet. If I can't do beef on my plate, I'm not doing it on the internet. Yeah, that's the one. So, we're going to start with blood type O. Blood type O makes up the majority of Americans. So that means 44% of all Americans is blood type O, okay? Here are some of the ailments that you guys are prone to. If you have any of these ailments, put it in the comments, okay? What kind of tea am I having? Regular old tea from the grocery. The tea that benefits me according to my foods list. If you need to know what food, what teas you benefit from, go get your foods list. There's a whole beverage section that tells you what tea benefits your blood type. 
I drink the tea that benefits my blood type. Okay. The name of the brand, are you asking me for the brand of tea that I use? The only teas I use is Stash and Bigelow. That's it. If you want to know anything more than that, sir, go get my foods list. Okay? You get a three, you get a three question minimum over here, and you've used them up already, and we haven't even started. So you out of questions. Okay? So hi. So if you have any of these ailments, put it in the comments. Insulin resistance. Now a lot of you don't know that you have insulin resistance. So let me start with high blood pressure. Do you have high blood pressure as a blood type O? If you have high blood pressure, put it in the comments. Okay? If you have high blood pressure, put it in the comments. If you have high blood pressure, put it in the comments because blood, high blood pressure is very common for blood type O. And I'm about to tell you why, okay? A lot of people that have high blood pressure have high blood pressure because they are insulin resistant, okay? Your doctor will say, oh, your blood pressure is high, you need to cut back on sodium, bop, bop, bop. Even though you cut back on sodium, you still have high blood pressure, okay? It is because of the insulin resistance. When your red blood cells become resistant to glucose, it causes your arteries and your veins, uh-oh, uh-oh, sauna time, it's sauna time. It causes your arteries and your veins to constrict. When your arteries and your veins constrict, that puts pressure on your heart. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I got clogged arteries and I got plaque in my arteries. No, it really ain't that. It really is because you're eating a lot of carbohydrates. By you eating those carbohydrates, you're causing your body to just dump a bunch of insulin into your bloodstream. Even though that insulin is in your bloodstream, it does not mean that that insulin is actually getting into your red blood cells. So now, because of all this insulin, your red blood cells are resistant. Okay? So your high blood pressure is coming from your insulin resistance. Okay? The bottom line is blood type O ain't supposed to be eating no carbohydrates. I'm going to let y'all go ahead and marinate on that for a second because you're going to become very emotional when I start talking about your favorite foods. Sierra was great in concert. Would I go see her by herself? Nah, probably not. Okay? But another thing that you guys are very, very prone to is bad bacteria in your gut. Okay? That is called intestinal dysbiosis. When you have a bunch of bad bacteria, what you need to understand is the body is made up of mostly bacteria. I'm always hating on the O's. What did I say that was hating on y'all? That you can't eat carbohydrates? That's hating? Do y'all know the definition of hating? Oh, I was about to say. No, I'm not hating on y'all yet, but give me a minute. When we get to that red meat part, I'm definitely going to be hating on you. Just give me a minute. I'll get there. I'm not there yet, okay? Our bodies are mostly bacteria, okay? So there's never going to be a time, we're not talking about no politics today, don't bring that shit over here today. I don't wanna hear nothing about no fucking politics today. I know what I'm doing, y'all know what y'all doing, there's nothing to talk about, okay? Nobody is changing anybody's minds. Either we're blue or we're red. Nobody is changing anybody's minds, so there's no point in talking about it anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. I know what I'm doing when I go in there. Okay? So when you're trying your best to get rid of bacteria from your body, you are literally hurting yourself. Because the body is mostly bacteria. There's never going to be a time that you can rid the body of bacteria. People ask me that all the time. Why can I get rid of bacteria? 
we have trillions of bacteria and several hundred different strains. And those different strains have different processes that they do in the body, okay? This is why y'all need to understand the importance of eating according to your blood type because all four blood types have a totally different gut microbiome. Meaning, we, have, we all have a different level of stomach acid, we all have a different level and different types of digestive enzymes, and we all have different strains and levels of bacteria. So we all can't eat the same things. And that bacteria has its favorite foods. So when you're feeding your body the food that that bacteria likes, it is going to protect you. It is going to fight for you. It's gonna be your biggest, best friend. Stop trying to make friends on the internet and friends in real life. You need to make friends with that damn bacteria that's in your body. Because that bacteria is going to be with you to the last day. It's your day one. It's your last day. Okay? You need to be having conversations with yourself. What do you, what do you want to eat today? Mr. B, what would you like to eat today? Here are your choices, Mr. B. Another thing that is very common amongst you O's is thyroid issues. If you have thyroid issues, put in comments. Your thyroid issues also come from your bad bacteria in your gut because that unfriendly bacteria causes your immune system to attack your thyroid. That's crazy to me. And then inflammation and anemia. If you have any of those ailments, put them in the comments. So, before we even get started, tap the screen while you're here, share the live, and check your emotions at the door. I know that's going to be hard for y'all to do, but when you start hearing what your favorite foods have done to you, you're going to lash out and then you're going to start looking for alternatives. What's the substitute for this? What's the alternative if I can't eat that? Your alternative to eating something that you're not supposed to eat is always going to be spit. What can I what can I eat instead of that? What can I drink instead of that? Spit. Air. Anything is better than that. Okay? We have to stop thinking that everything has a substitute. Because usually the substitute is worse than the original thing. Okay? Get into the mindset of just letting go of shit that doesn't serve you. Y'all be the first, I've been in network marketing for 35 years. One thing they always say is let go of things that no, don't, no longer serve you. These things have never served you, okay? Not only did they not serve you, but they have hurt you. So the same feelings you would have about a friend that betrays your trust is the same way you should feel about these foods that have betrayed your trust, okay? With that being said, the number one thing that you should never eat again as a blood type O is wheat. As soon as you eat some wheat, it causes a violent inflammation in your intestines. When you become inflamed in your intestines, all of your organs are going to become inflamed. The largest organ on the body is your skin. So wheat is literally at the root of your weight gain and your inability to lose weight. The number two thing that wheat does in your body is it converts your happy hormones into anger and aggression hormones. So you can be perfectly happy and then you start eating wheat products and now you're depressed and sad and angry and anxious. How many of y'all are depressed? How many of y'all deal with anxiety every day? Look at the climate of the country, how everybody's so angry. How do you get rid of mucus, sweetheart? You need mucus just to blink your eyeballs. You need mucus just to process the food that you eat. Y'all have to stop being so fixated with this mucus. Mucus is the body's, the body only has two defense mechanisms. Mucus is a defense mechanism that protects your immune system. And y'all trying to get rid of the only two protecting, one of the two protections you have. Y'all have to stop. Y'all just be saying that shit so you can sell some loose herbs to somebody that don't know better. If you are a blood type A, the reason that you have more mucus than all the rest of the people is because you have a weaker immune system than all the rest of the people. So be glad that your body is doing something to protect your super weak immune system. 
Otherwise, you'd have infection after infection after infection. Okay? The number three thing that wheat does in your body is it stops your body from absorbing minerals and nutrients from other foods. So now, here you are eating all these super healthy foods, but none of those nutrients and minerals are getting absorbed into your bloodstream because you're eating a hater ass piece of bread. Talk about hating. You're eating something that's literally like, no, -uh, you can't come in here. What? So now you're mineral deficient and mineral deficiencies is what's at the root of mental illness. So your depression and your anxiety and your bipolarism and your ADHD, your schizophrenia, all of that is mental illness from mineral deficiencies. Not only that, when you have mineral deficiencies, your body has to seek out minerals from anywhere it can get them. And the place that it gets them is your skeleton. I, mucus is not your friend. Nobody said you had to be friends with fucking mucus. Some of y'all are too hotepish for me to have conversations with. So my question to you is, why the fuck you eating shit? And why the fuck are you putting your immune system in such, such jeopardy that your body creates so much mucus? I'll wait. Why are you not cognizant of the shit you're putting in your body that now causes your body to create an overabundance of mucus? Hmm? Huh? Your body is only going to create mucus when it feels threatened. So why are you putting shit in your body that threatens it? Y'all don't want to take no responsibility for shit. You did it. The reason that your mucus is so high is because you did it. The fourth thing that wheat does in your body, cystic fibrosis. How'd you get cystic fibrosis? How'd you get it? Were you born with it? No. So how did you get it? If y'all want to listen to doctors, that's on you. If y'all want to listen to doctors that are just going to deal you a bunch of drugs that's never going to cure your cystic fibrosis, boo-boo, then why the fuck you sitting up here talking to me? Genetic syndrome. Okay. I can't. I can't. I'm not going to. Anywho. <laughs> We're not going to play those games. I'm literally telling you about your genetics. These diseases are not passed down from generation to generation. What's passed down from generation to generation is your blood type and them recipes. Your blood type and them recipes. That's why y'all are in the boats that you're in right now with no paddles. Because of your blood and the recipes that circulate throughout your family. This is why you and your family have all of these the same diseases. Genetics. Yes, it's genetics. Genetically, you're eating the wrong food. You're eating the wrong food for your genetics. That's what all of this is about. <laughs> That's all it is, boo-boo. I'm just making this shit super simple for you to understand it's not rocket science, okay? The four blood groups have different genetics. You should be eating for those genetics, okay? So anywho, the fourth thing that wheat does in your body is it completely slows down your metabolism. How many of you guys just feel sluggish and tired all the time you wake up tired okay it's because of wheat kidney beans and navy beans what they do is they literally interfere with your metabolic hormones the metabolism is run by hormones so when you're eating wheat it literally stops the hormones from doing what they're designed to do which is to convert your food into energy so that you can use it for fuel. 
what it does if you're eating wheat is it converts that food into sugar and then stores it as fat in your body wheat is diabolical the number two thing you should never eat again as a blood type o is corn corn is another one okay oh i don't really like corn because corn is gmo and corn doesn't digest in your system bah, bah, bah. i'm talking about blood type o right now ma'am you can just listen okay you can just listen corn is in everything high fructose corn syrup regular corn syrup corn oil corn starch okay and then white distilled vinegar is made from sun ripened yellow gmo corn that's every condiment in your house facts 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 what are you talking about ma'am facts i was like fast every condiment in your house got vinegar in it. when you're eating corn it stops your body from making insulin it stops your body from making insulin and the thing about it is we've gone all this time all we've been on the on this earth for decades and we've gone all this time thank you not knowing the importance of insulin all this time okay you're eating something that's stopping your body from making insulin that's all corn grains anything with corn in it go look at all of the condiments you have in your house your ketchup your mustard your mayonnaise your salad dressings your barbecue sauce your hot sauce all of it okay so between wheat and corn, what you should never, ever, ever eat again, all these things are on your avoids list. And when you go get your foods list, you'll see these things. Barley, corn flakes, corn meal, hominy, polenta, all corn grains. That includes your popcorn. That includes your grits. Not my grits. Cream of wheat, Amir Familia, Farina Farro, gluten flour. Somebody was going back and forth with me about some pastas, some gluten-free pastas made with all the... Y'all are so addicted to these things that you are so willing to try to outwit your body. I don't care how old you get. You're never going to be smarter than your body. You're never going to get one over on your body. You're never going to trick it. Okay? If you cannot have carbohydrates simply because it turns into sugar in your body and this is what is wreaking havoc on your health, why don't you just stop eating the fucking pasta? Well, what about gluten-free pasta made with such and such flour and then it have... Y'all going through all of that drama for a plate of food? Y'all going through all of that drama for a plate of food? It's just food. The problem is two things. You have parasites. Parasites crave carbohydrates. They don't give a shit what form it's in because they know that whatever you're going to eat is going to turn into sugar, okay? Oh, was that you? Then stop. Parasites in your belly send messages to your brain telling you to eat anything that is going to turn into sugar in your body. That's sweets, that's savory, that's potato chips, that's cake, cookies, pies, all of your, your rice, your pasta, all of that shit turns into sugar. Nobody is sitting around eating a big old five pound bag of Domino sugar, okay? Your sugar is coming from starches and carbs, okay? And as, as for blood type O, your body is extremely sensitive to sugar. 
Y'all cannot eat foods that turns into sugar in your body because you don't have any antigens. The antigens that are on our red blood cells are little sugars. Blood type O has no antigens. This is what makes you guys able to donate blood to other blood types. Because, you're, because you have no antigens, it won't interfere with the other antigens on other blood types. Y'all don't have no sugar on your red blood cells. So you cannot eat food that turns into sugar. Hi. So hold on. Here's some more shit you ain't supposed to ever eat again. Anything that's gluten-free. And another thing y'all need to know about this gluten-free shit. Gluten-free is still wheat. It's still wheat. Okay? Go click the link on my bio and find the book. Okay? Listen. Just because something is gluten-free doesn't mean that it's wheat-free. And the only reason that y'all are buying gluten-free shit, and here's, here's another thing you need to know. Most of your fame, your super famous gluten-free shit is very, very high in glyphosate. I have posted that video on my page. Y'all out here buying Bob's Mill and spending all this money on this gluten-free shit, and it is packed. It has an overabundance of glyphosate in it. Go look it up. I don't have to make up none of this shit. Okay? So... Graham flour, grape nuts, grits, kamut, lentil flour, gall, mastigum, papadum, puffed wheat, seven grain, shredded wheat, sorghum, wheat bran, wheat germ, bulgur wheat, durum wheat, semolina pasta. Semolina is all of your pastas. Your macaroni, your spaghetti, your lasagna, your fettuccine, even your ramen noodles are made from semolina wheat. Then you got couscous, whole grain wheat, whole wheat flour, white flour, sprouted wheat. But what about sourdough? The third thing you should never ever eat again as a blood type O is dairy foods. Blood type O and blood type A can never eat dairy. I said whole grain. If you don't want to listen, that's on you. Y'all have to start listening with your ears and less with your emotions. Whole grain is going to be even more problems for you. Okay? All of the grains in America were genetically modified in the 50s. There is no such thing as a great grain in America. It doesn't exist. You're being lied to. You're being hoodwinked. Go get your foods list. You can see whether or not you benefit from yucca. The, the short answer is you don't. But okay. When y'all are asking me all these questions about the food, my one question that I have for you is this. Do you care enough about your body to let go of the shit that's hurting you? That's the only question I have. Because y'all are sitting up and making bargains with yourself. You're trying to replace, trying to replace fries with yucca fries. They're still fries. Y'all are still out here eating a bunch of fried foods, but you think because you're eating sweet potato fries instead of regular fries, that it's better. It's not. It's still a fucking potato. It's still a potato. I don't care what y'all call it, what color it is, what country it came from. It's still a freaking potato. Y'all are so busy trying to appease the worms in your stomach and your tongue. So that means you are willing to put your body in a state where it is so stressed out that it creates disease. When you eat something that does not go with your blood type, it is going to cause your body to be in distress, which means now you have triggered your body's two defense mechanisms, swelling and mucus. 
I've traveled this world, I've had some amazing foods, but not one of those foods is worth the drama. The drama of being swollen and in pain and then consistently eating that food to the point that it creates disease in your body. So you're willing to trade your good health for bad health because you are in love with food. So anyway, as far as dairy foods, dairy foods are extremely dangerous to blood type O and blood type A. 86% of the US population is to never eat anything dairy. No cheese, no milk, no yogurt, no none of it. The first thing, this is what y'all need to understand. The stuff that I'm telling y'all right now immediately triggers inflammation in your body. So every time you're eating some cheese, your macaroni and cheese, for example, macaroni and cheese is extremely, there is no alternative to yogurt. You have hit your limit for questions. Because I don't think that I'm speaking in a language that you don't understand. I fucking said all dairy. Whether you accept what I say or not, that's completely up to you. Y'all the same people that have kids and you don't want your kids asking you a bunch of fucking questions. Well, why not? Well, how come? I didn't. But y'all come here and act like two-year-olds. I said no fucking dairy. It immediately triggers inflammation in your body. Why do you have high blood pressure? Because your ass is eating dairy. Why do you have a stomach full of bad bacteria? Because you're eating dairy. Why is your skin bad? Why your hair falling out? Why you got endometriosis? Why you got alopecia? Why you got yeast infections? Why your thyroid jacked up? Why you got urinary tract infections? Why you got eczema and psoriasis and dermatitis and rosacea? You be going out here and buying all of this skincare shit, but you still sitting up eating cheese sandwiches. Because grilled cheese is your favorite. But your skin looks like fucking the moon craters. Anywho. Putting on seven layers of makeup because your skin is fucked up. Because you like real cheese. And cereal at midnight. Anywho. The first thing that dairy does in your body is trigger inflammation, which then sends your blood pressure up. How come your doctor didn't tell you? Stop what? Telling the truth? There's no way for me to stop hurting y'all feelings because y'all feelings are all wrapped up in the food that you eat. Y'all have love, attraction, real life human feelings for food. You wake up thinking about food. You go to bed thinking about food. You go to bed thinking about what you're going to eat tomorrow. You can't wait to wake up just so you can eat what you plan on eating tomorrow. Anywho, here are the other things that are raising your blood pressure and triggering inflammation in your body. Kidney beans, lentils, bacon, corn oil, food additives, guar gum, carrageenan, peanut oil, and hold on, potatoes, navy beans, tomatoes. Let's talk about these potatoes. Yeah, it's there. It's on, a, it's on um, Selfish Supplements website. Let's talk about these potatoes because y'all have a hard time letting go of these potatoes. Potatoes are extremely dangerous to blood type O. It's extreme, they are extremely dangerous to everybody, but especially blood type O. The number one thing that it does, it triggers inflammation in your body and skyrockets your blood pressure. Okay? 
okay? Potatoes. The second thing that it does is that they are extremely harmful to your kidneys. Yes, open this out. Extremely harmful to your kidneys. Why do you think black people have so many kidney issues? Why do black people have so many kidney issues? How many potato recipes can y'all put in the comments? What's your favorite potato recipe? Put it in the comments. Hi. Black people are on dialysis four times as much as the next race of people. Black people are at the top of the kidney replacement list. We have more chronic kidney disease than everyone else. First of all, potatoes are packed with potassium. Potassium jacks your kidneys up. The second thing that they do is they emit a phytotoxin because it's a nightshade. Yes, all potatoes are bad because potatoes are starchy root vegetables. Starchy root vegetables are very hard for your body to process. So, nightshade vegetables are vegetables that have their own built-in, Jesus Christ, scalloped potatoes with ham and cheese. Have y'all noticed that the cheaper the food is, the more you eat of it? Have y'all noticed? The cheaper the food, the more you eat of it. You can buy a 27 pound bag of potatoes for $5. Okay, please don't. She was like, I won't be making it anymore. <laughs> listen, listen. All nightshade vegetables, it's a whole class of vegetables. Nightshade vegetables, nightshade. So go look it up on Google so you can read about it, okay? But nightshade vegetables include potatoes, tomatoes, and those are two things that blood type O is never supposed to eat. Y'all can't have tomatoes either because it triggers inflammation and sends your blood pressure up. So you got bell peppers, okra, eggplant, sorrel, tobacco. What am I missing? I think I've named them all, right? Y'all have to stop confusing nationality with blood type. Nobody gives a shit what country you're from. Your blood type doesn't change when you move to a new country. You still the same blood type. Blood type predates all this made up bullshit. In the beginning, Italy wasn't even named Italy. Nobody had a name for it, it was just a landmass. All of these cultures are made up. So the culture that y'all are so loyal to is fucking killing you. Oh, I'm Jamaican. How can I not have sorrel? Just don't fucking eat it. Don't fucking drink it. Like, I don't understand. What about okra? What about it? I said it's a nightshade. Some of y'all, some of y'all. Shh. I told y'all that y'all were going to become emotional. You're like, how would I become emotional over food? Because I'm talking about the foods y'all eat on a regular basis. Y'all are literally walking around with a body full of freaking diseases. Your doctor never told you how you got the disease. He certainly isn't going to tell you how to get rid of the disease. And when somebody is telling you how you got it, you're like, no, all. Oh. Then how did you get it? Do you live next door to a nuclear power plant? Are you bathing in water that has a bunch of crazy chlorine? I mean, what are y'all doing? How do you think you got sick, sweetheart? How 
do you think you got sick? It's not enough for you to say, I got sick from the food. You need to know specifically what you need to stop eating. In order for your body to heal up, you can no longer put those things in your body. Why would you continue to eat the thing that, that created the disease in your body? This is how you maintain disease. This is why here you are 10 years later and you still have the same disease. Because you're feeding it. Nothing lives that is starving. You starve something, it dies. The, the food has been weaponized. Nobody is making y'all eat this food. You have to take responsibility. Y'all cannot take no responsibility for y'all stuff. Y'all claim to be grown-ups. Okay? Y'all claim to be grown-ups. But you don't want to take responsibility because your ass goes over to the fucking four for four at Wendy's and now you want to say the food is weaponized. The fuck? Nobody made you eat the fucking four for four at the Wendy's. That's why y'all are some easy marks for these scam, these scamming ass doctors. Okay, exactly. Why are y'all getting the question that y'all need to ask yourselves is why am I so emotion? Why am I so emotionally attached? To the point that I get upset that somebody's telling me what the food is doing in my body. That's addiction. And here's the thing. They never want to say that people are addicted to food. They'll, they'll tell your ass to go to AA for alcoholism. They'll tell you to go to NA for narcotics. But where are the meetings for the food addicts? Where's the support group for the food addicts? Right here right here because it literally is only going to take you three days to cycle this shit out of your body okay if it's not addiction what is it because food don't make me emotional because it's just food because some of y'all sound like crackheads it's giving very crackish behavior But y'all be the same people that look down your nose on the crackheads and look down your nose on the meth heads. But y'all got five and six prescription bottles in your purse. So back to these nightshade vegetables. Whenever you're eating a nightshade vegetable, everything on earth has a defense mechanism. Every living thing on earth has something that protects itself. The thing that protects nightshade vegetables is a toxin that when it feels threatened by insects like caterpillars and things like that, that try to eat it, it emits a phytotoxin that will kill the insect. However, here we are eating those foods. And those phytotoxins are still being released into our body. So when those toxins meet our blood, a chemical reaction is going to happen. Your body is going to feel like it's being attacked. So every time you're eating tomatoes and potatoes, your body feels like it is being attacked by a virus or a rogue bacteria or toxins. You're the one putting your body in a state of stress by your food choices. So imagine this, this is the analogy I use all the time. If somebody called you on the phone and threatened to show up at your house and off you, and then they hang up, you're going to be looking out your window. You're going to be listening for doorknobs turning. You're going to be at your window with whatever weapon you can find. I don't care if that's a broomstick, but in the meantime, you're going to be stressed the fuck out. When your body is stressed, it exacerbates whatever ailment you are battling, okay? 
whatever ailment you have, it's going to get worse because of the stress you're putting on your immune system and your organs. This is how you wear out your organs. People always wonder, how do you, how do you have kidney failure? How do you have this failure? How do you have that failure? When you have overrun that organ, it ceases to operate. That's how it happens. So imagine someone making you run on a treadmill 24 hours a day until you fucking pass out. That's your organ. Most of y'all are eating food that your body can't even digest because you don't have enough stomach acid. So that causes your body to just continue to run and run and run and run. This is why you can't sleep well because your body is awake trying to process something it was never supposed to even process. So you have to become conscious of your body is a whole living thing that depends on you for food, water, rest, sunlight, exercise. Those are the five things that your body needs. And it's five simple fucking things. But you are doing all the wrong stuff. So y'all have to know, this is an easy fix, my friends. Don't let the doctor talk you into these drugs for the rest of your life because they tried to do that to me. Okay? This is an easy fix. And you have to stop telling yourself that this is hard. It's hard giving up potatoes. It's hard. To... It's hard going to dialysis every week. Ask a dialysis patient. How easy is it for you to go and sit on a machine three, four hours a week just to remove urine from your body? Are potatoes worth that? Are potatoes worth you going to dialysis? Not to me. I'm, I'm cool on potatoes. So let's talk about this bad bacteria in your gut. That's the way y'all need to start thinking. When y'all be looking at this shit, you got is, is that worth the trouble of the heartburn and the indigestion and the inflammation and the bubble guts and the bloating and all the shit that you about to go through? You did dialysis for six Damn. I don't wish that on nobody. I don't wish that on nobody. It's hard to go to chemotherapy five days a week. I can't imagine. I don't wish none of that shit on nobody. Especially when you can fix this shit yourself. Okay? So let's talk about this bad bacteria. A lot of the common ailments that people are struggling with come from bad bacteria in your body. Okay, my sister's going through something right now. What's the root cause? Bad bacteria in her body. And I didn't lecture her because what can I say? You've already done the fucking damage. You already know what you're not supposed to be doing. But you're doing it. I told y'all that nobody, between me and Jordan, we're the only ones that eat according to our blood type in our family. Yet we sit and watch everybody else be fucking sick. How many of y'all dealing with that right now? How many of y'all are, are faithful to your journey, but everybody else around you thinks it's a fucking joke? Running to the doctor, getting a bunch of drugs, bag of drugs, ain't gonna do shit. What can I do? I've already said everything that I needed to say. There's nothing I can do about it. Because they people are gonna do what the fuck they wanna do. And nobody changes until they get sick enough. Some of y'all ain't sick enough yet. Think about how hard-headed you are that it took you to get on dialysis for you to make a change. Think about how hard-headed you are that you had to be on chemo for you to make a fucking change. I had to get to the point that I couldn't walk. I could not walk. That's how hard-headed I was. Because your body is literally telling you 15 to 30 minutes after you eat something, it tells you whether or not that was good or bad. 
the signs are acid reflux, heartburn, bloating, gas, everything that you see on a Pepto-Bismol commercial is your body saying, I'm not supposed to eat that. Especially when you go to sleep after you eat. If the food that you eat makes you fall asleep, that's the first thing you should never eat again. That is the first sign that that was something you should never have eaten. Because you've eaten something that caused your blood sugar to plummet. And y'all think it's funny. Oh, I got the itis, girl. I'm a, I know I'm about to pass out. You know I'm about to pass out? And you, you're literally passing out. Why do y'all think that's funny? The food that you ate caused you to pass out. And y'all think it's a joke. That is literally putting your body in distress and y'all think it's funny. Y'all done named it the itis. So this bad bacteria that's what I'm saying. Everybody here has learned the hard way. I want y'all to not have to get to the point that I was at. This is why I come here. Because I hope that I can keep y'all from being at the level of pain I was in. You were diagnosed with an autoimmune disease that attacked your kidneys. Yep. We'll get to these autoimmune diseases in a second. This bad bacteria, if you have any of these ailments that I'm about to list, put it in the comments. Endometriosis, alopecia, any skin issues, acne, psoriasis, plaque psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, dermatitis, plaque, any, any, of, any skin issues, urinary tract infections, yeast infections, H. pylori, staph, E. coli, COPD, thyroid issues, anxiety, depression, certain cancers like stomach cancer, colon cancer. All of that comes from bad bacteria in your gut. Here are the foods that are giving you the problems that you have. Dairy food, again. Corn, again. Anything with corn, high fructose corn syrup, regular corn syrup, white distilled vinegar, corn starch, corn oil. Potatoes, again. Rhubarb and oranges. Oranges, orange juice, cuties, tangerines, tangelos, they're all oranges. Oranges creates bad bacteria in everybody's gut. Oranges are literally the worst fruit on the planet. The worst. The only reason that you think it's the best is because of marketing and advertising. It's the worst. Only thing I like orange is clothes and nail polish. The color. So you want to know why your skin is so bad? Because you're drinking orange juice every day. How would you like to know that your endometriosis came from your love of cheese? How would you like to know that your hair is falling out because you eat a lot of high fructose corn syrup? Let's talk about this leaky gut. Leaky gut is when your intestines become so soft that food particles leak out of them. So as food is digesting, it's breaking through your intestinal wall and just swimming around. What causes that to happen? Tomatoes, again. Corn, again. Dairy, again. Vinegar, again. Coffee. Not only does coffee cause leaky gut, 
but coffee stops collagen production in your body. Collagen is responsible for your healthy skin, hair, and nails. Collagen is responsible for the cartilage between your joints and your bones. This is why collagen, this is why this industry of collagen is making as much money as it's making. Because you need to put some collagen in your coffee if you are gonna drink it. These people know exactly what these foods do to us. These corporations know exactly what these foods do to us. Vinegar, white distilled vinegar is made from corn. Apple cider vinegar is made from apples. And surprisingly, apples don't benefit anybody. Did y'all know that? Apples is not on nobody's beneficial list. So everything that we have been told our entire lives that is so great and so healthy for us isn't. Apples and oranges are lies. Lies. If apples were so healthy, why are they not beneficial to anybody? Oranges is on everybody's avoid list. Okay? So you've been told, oh, we're supposed to have all this vitamin C and this is where we get all this vitamin. Lemons have more vitamin C than oranges do. If nothing else, we should have been drinking lemonade for breakfast. So let's talk about this thyroid issue. Thyroid issues are very common with blood type O. Your thyroid issues come from bad bacteria in your gut. But there are four vegetables that creates a non-friendly bacteria in your gut that causes your immune system to attack your thyroid. Those vegetables is cabbage, cauliflower, mustard greens, and Brussels sprouts. Y'all are not supposed to eat any of those vegetables at all. I'll pause for emotional outbursts. How many of y'all eating cauliflower? Cauliflower pizza, cauliflower rice? Because they told you that this is the alternative to rice. Now you got thyroid problems. You don't even know why you got thyroid problems. So if you have a slow and sluggish metabolism, it is because you're eating wheat, kidney beans, and navy beans. Those lectins, now what y'all don't understand is, all whole foods have lectins. Lectins are just little small proteins. When those lectins come in contact with our blood, it creates either a positive reaction or a negative reaction, okay? There is always going to be a chemical reaction between your blood and the lectins in food. When it is a positive reaction, you're going to have more energy, your mood is going to be elevated, your sleep is going to be fantastic, your skin is going to start being fantastic. All good, 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 good. When it is a negative reaction, the first two things that happen is inflammation and mucus. Okay? But then other things start to happen. The human body has 44 different hormones. Men and women have the same hormones. We just have different levels, okay? The metabolism is run by hormones. So when you're eating foods that interfere with those hormones, and what y'all need to understand too is bacteria has processes in the body and hormones have processes in the body that they take care of. Hormones run the metabolism when you're eating foods that interfere with the process of those hormones, it stops that food from being converted into fuel and energy, and it turns that food into sugar and stores it as fat. This is why you're sluggish and tired all the time, because you're eating something that's interfering with those hormones. So how do we turn it around for blood type O? What foods should you be eating if you have any of those ailments that I mentioned, okay? So to reduce inflammation, when you reduce inflammation in your body, it's going to automatically help you to bring your blood pressure 
down because y'all are taking all these blood pressure meds but it's not helping your blood pressure so why y'all taking these blood pressure meds what are the blood pressure meds supposed to do educate me on the blood pressure meds what are they supposed to do because i don't know Are they supposed to keep your blood pressure at the same level all the time? What are they supposed to be doing? I'm confused. Lower it. Expand your vessels. How? Okay, so let me let me let me pose this question. When you eat carbohydrates on a regular basis you are making your body create insulin that goes into your bloodstream eventually your red blood cells will start to resist the insulin when your red blood cells start to resist the insulin then your arteries and your veins constrict so someone said that the drugs are supposed to expand your arteries. Well, the question is, you're still eating carbs. You're still eating something that's making your arteries and your veins smaller. So when your arteries and your veins get smaller, that puts pressure on your heart. Your blood pressure problems don't come from your brain. For some reason, we all thought that blood pressure had to do with our brain. Am I the only one that ever thought that? Because that's the impression the doctor gave me. Okay? Your blood pressure problems are coming from your heart. Because you're putting pressure on your heart. And that is sending your blood pressure up. Okay? Blood type O cannot eat carbohydrates. What's the fastest way to stress yourself out, ma'am? The fastest way to stress your body out is to put food in it it's not supposed to have in it. The number one, you're literally stressing yourself out. Y'all want to blame all of these external things for your stress. But your stress is literally coming... What the fuck is my sister talking about? Girl. I don't have time for your shenanigans. My family's crazy. Anywho, I just wrote her back. Girl, I'm on live. I can't, I ain't got time. Hold on. I'm getting all kinds of. If you can't, don't worry about it. I'll tell you later. Listen, let's reduce this inflammation. Reducing the inflammation, reducing the inflammation is going to help you start to bring your blood pressure down naturally. By choosing the foods that you're eating, you yourself are putting undue stress and tension on your own body. Okay? So, the number one way to reduce inflammation in your body is to start eating omega-3 containing fish. Fish that's high in omega-3s. Omega-3s reduce inflammation. So the fish that benefits you highly as a blood type O is cod, halibut, red snapper, and trout. Okay? Another super anti-inflammatory food is walnuts. Then hazelnuts, flaxseed oil, parsnips, P3, 
peas pineapple okay so if you are dealing with inflammation do y'all know what inflammation is because most people walking around today know salmon does not benefit you that is the first thing that y'all ask well what about salmon salmon does not benefit you sweetheart it doesn't benefit you most people walking around today that believe they are overweight you're just inflamed okay this is why when you start eating according to your blood type in the first seven days you're going to drop seven to ten pounds of inflammation in the first seven days inflammation is because you're eating foods that don't go with your blood type so you are literally causing your body to believe it's being attacked so you are the person causing chronic inflammation in your body your body does not become inflamed if you're not putting something in it that it considers to be a threat a lot of y'all are inflamed because of the drugs you're taking do y'all know that every single prescription drug is toxic to your body this is why your body has such a hard time healing itself because you're literally putting drugs in it that prevent your body from healing itself you're the one that's stopping your healing okay I had sarcoidosis for six and a half years and was on all kinds of drugs from the doctor nothing ever changed for six and a half years I couldn't even walk up a flight of stairs I had sarcoidosis and asthma it took me to fire that doctor and to get off those drugs for my body to heal itself up you're preventing yourself from healing what was the fish the fish that highly benefits blood type O is cod, halibut, red snapper, and trout. Those are not the only fish that you benefit from. So go and get your foods list. Right. The body will absolutely, the body is literally designed to heal itself. You're the one preventing it. You're tired a lot because you're eating the wrong foods, man. Okay. So let's talk about what is the food that your bacteria loves to eat. So did you stop taking the meds? Yes, all at once. Why would I continue to take them? The drugs that you guys are on ain't doing shit, but making your situation worse. How many of y'all are cured from the drugs your doctor prescribed? I'll wait. I'll wait. How many of you? So my question is, if your drugs are not healing you, why are you taking them? If your drugs are not healing you, why are you taking them? What do you think that they're doing? Did y'all ask your doctor when you were going to be healed? I'm going to punch somebody in the face.
doctors are there to make money. They are, my doctor literally looked me in the face. I asked him this very simple question. And I dare y'all to ask your doctor, just for shits and giggles, I wanna hear what your doctor says to you, okay? Ask your doctor, when am I gonna be healed? And see what he says. I asked my doctor, when am I gonna be healed? We've been in this, we've been doing this for six and a half years. When can I expect some healing? This man literally looked me in the face, chuckled and said, you're gonna be on those drugs for the rest of your life. Who, who sir, who are you talking to? At that point, I said, well, there's no point in me seeing you again, because if you don't have a way to fix me, why am I coming to see you? If my disease is beyond your knowledge and experience, why am I talking to you? That was it. Because at that point, I feel like these people have no interest in fixing me. So why am I spending all this money and all this time to be in this man's presence and he's not doing anything to fix me? I'm not coming here for shits and giggles. This is not a good time. So at that point, I felt like I can do this better than he can do this. Because you know what the number one thing is? I give a fuck about me. He doesn't. If he lost me, he would have another one to fill that slot in a, a heartbeat. I, the number one motivator was I actually give a fuck about me. He doesn't. No, it's not practice. They're not practicing on us, we aren't. They're doing exactly what it's designed to do. It is designed to get you on the drugs and to keep you on the drugs. 70% of all Americans, regardless of age, are on at least one prescription drug. 70%. The number one industry in America is the pharmaceutical industry. The number one industry is drugs. They know exactly what the food is doing. They know exactly what the drugs are doing. This is why you have to become aware of what you're putting in your body because these corporations are allowed to put whatever they want in those foods. So you can't just sit back and blame, oh, the food is weaponized. Yes, it is, but it's up to you to know what to put in your body. It's up to you to read those labels. It's up to you to question everything. It's up to you to protect your kids from that shit. It's up to us. No one is coming to save us. No one is protecting us. Which means you have to protect yourself. So. Here are the foods that your bacteria loves to eat as a blood type O. Number one thing is onions. Onions. Y'all have been bombarded with all of these commercials from Jamie Lee Curtis and the like telling you, oh, eat Activia, it's great for gut health. That shit is going to make your gut worse because blood type O and blood type A can never ever have dairy. So you're getting sold products that create more bad bacteria in your gut that triggers all of these diseases that you have to go to the doctor and get drugs for. Okay? Your gut bacteria loves onions. All of them, raw, cooked, red, purple, white, yellow, Vidalia, sweet, green. It does not care. It loves onions. String beans broccoli and stop letting these people tell you oh broccoli is lab but it's made in the lab broccoli has been around since 600 a.d i don't know of no laboratories that were around at 600 a.d 
I said raw or cooked. It does not matter. Just get it in your body. Y'all have to stop overthinking this shit. Because before 120 years ago, food was medicine. We only dealt with five things. Food, herbs, plants, teas, and spices. There were no drugs 120 years ago. 120 years ago, people were way healthier than they are today. Ask yourself, why do we have more doctors and more drugs and people are sicker than ever in history? Go get your foods list. And this is not your first time being here. So go get your foods list, DJ. The fuck are you waiting on? And none of these, just go back to the 70s. Nobody was sick in the 70s. Nobody was sick in the 70s. So why all of a sudden, here we are 50 years later, damn near 55 years later, everybody's sick. None of these autoimmune diseases existed. They are literally adding five to 10 new autoimmune diseases every year. So what else does your bacteria like? Escarole, chicory, Swiss chard, and kale. Please cook your green vegetables. The only reason that I say that is because parasites love dark leafy greens. Okay? Parasites love to hide up in dark leafy greens. So y'all sitting around doing these kale smoothies and doing these uh, kale salads. Listen, this is why you have a stomach full of parasites. Okay? What is going to completely change your life? What is it that you should have been eating since you had those first little teeth in your mouth? What is going to speed up your metabolism, raise your dopamine and your serotonin levels, speak, just make you drop weight, clear up your skin? Just, this is the part where I start eating on y'all red meat red meat blood type o benefits from red meat only what's your favorite red meat put in the comments you benefit from beef lamb venison veal buffalo mutton deer y'all are eating everything but y'all out here trying to be vegetarian vegan pescatarian i'm a fruititarian when all y'all needed this entire time was some red meat on your plate and some damn onions and a glass of pineapple juice jordan said bison burgers were the best like it was the best Ground beef, I don't care how you get it in your, just get it in your body. Okay? Salmon does not benefit y'all. I done said that y'all can have the number one meat in the world. Like, but what about salmon? Fuck salmon. Fuck bossa. So here's the question. Why the fuck won't you do right? You just won't do right by yourself, will you? You just will not. Somebody literally is telling you the thing that is going to change your life. And you, well, what about grass? Can I have grass? What about leaves? Can I just eat some leaves? The fuck is wrong with y'all? Brisket is... Prime rib is my favorite beef. Ma'am, eat all the cod you want. I don't care. But what about, but what about, but what about, I don't love myself enough to eat what I'm supposed to eat. So what about? That's what you're saying. You're literally saying, I don't have enough respect for my day one. I don't have enough respect for myself to heal my body up. 
I don't have enough love for myself to do right by myself. Some of y'all got self-esteem issues. Some of y'all don't believe that you deserve to feel great. Some of y'all don't believe that you deserve to be healthy. Some of y'all just don't believe that you deserve better than what you're dealing with today. And that's something I can't help you with. Okay? The reason that you feel this way is because of the fucking food that you're putting in your body every day. Ask yourself why you feel this way. Because you're fucking sitting around eating a bunch of fucking ramen noodles. You're sitting around eating pizza. You're sitting around eating burgers. You're sitting around eating wheat, 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 wheat. Wheat is what's making you feel the way you're feeling. The minute you stop eating the things that make you feel bad and start eating the things that make you feel good, everything in your life is going to change. Every, I promise you, I guarantee it. You're doing it to yourself. That's the that's the problem that I have. Why am I cursing? Fuck you. I can curse. I can say whatever the fuck I want to say. I am 55 years old, bitch. I can say whatever the fuck I want to say. If you are so Christian and so offended, get the fuck off the live. Y'all better find some fucking kids to talk to. Why are you cursing? Because you're stupid as fuck. If y'all don't have enough power in your house to say whatever the fuck you want to say, stop using it as a way to come on the internet and try to find some power. You don't have no power here, sweetie. You don't pay not one bill in here. Trying to save lives is hard fucking work. Y'all can't do what I did. Now listen. I want y'all to go and take a seven day challenge. Y'all done tried every way of eating on the planet. You done done a master cleanse. You done, you done starved yourself. You're doing fast. You're doing a cabbage diet. Done, for seven days, I want y'all to only eat the beneficial foods and watch what happens to your body. Watch what happens to your mind. Watch what happens to your spirit. Watch. You are going to be so amazed when you and your body are on one accord. When you and your body are equally yoked. Y'all so worried about getting in relationships with people on the fucking internet and find, trying to find a man. You on dating sites and shit. Date yourself. Take yourself out to dinner. Focus on just yourself for the next seven days and watch what happens. That's all you have to do because this day one is going to be here until your last day this is who you need to build up trust with this is who you need to always have their back because it always has yours this is the one you need to be on one accord with fuck a man fuck a wife even your kids you have to put yourself first that's why half of y'all are sick right now because you're so busy worried about everybody else. Fuck everybody else. This is your time. Nobody here is by accident. None of y'all are here by accident. The only reason that you're seeing my face today is because you've been asking for an answer to your problems. You've been talking to God. You've been praying on it. And here I sit. All you need to save yourself is the right information. We have been fed the wrong information our entire lives. This is why we're in the predicament we're in. The only thing that you need to save yourself is the right information. Go get your foods list. Do not eat anything but the beneficial foods and watch what happens. You are going to be amazed. So, hold on, let's finish with the O's so we can go to the A's. What is going to help your thyroid? Your thyroid is left unprotected because your iodine levels are low. So when you start using turmeric in your food and also eating sea vegetables, 
wakami, kombu, nori, seaweed, bladder rack, sea moss, all of those things are going to raise your iodine levels so that it now protects your thyroid from its own immune system, okay? I'm, I'm reading your foods list. Go get your foods list. So, to repair that leaky gut, chicory, onions, peas, prunes, maitake mushrooms, beet greens, collard greens, and fava beans. Okay? So that's it for blood type O. This is not your full foods list. This is just what ailments are you prone to, what foods are triggering those ailments, and what foods will reverse them. Okay? So click the link on my page, download the food list into your phone, and start tomorrow. Okay? You're going to feel different in the first 48 hours. Where's blood type A? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay, so where's blood type A? Put A in the comments. Tap the screen and share the live. Now here is the deal with blood type A. Y'all are the complete opposite of blood type O. Okay? Blood type O has the strongest cardiovascular system, the strongest immune system. O was made to be perfection. Blood type A, y'all are the complete opposite. Okay? By being the complete opposite, it means you have the weakest immune system, you have the weakest cardiovascular system, and you guys are predisposed to certain diseases. Diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. Okay? Now let me tell you a little story about blood type A. At the root, just like I said, at the root of most of the problems for blood type O, is the fact that y'all cannot eat anything that turns into sugar in your body well blood type a at the root of your problems is the fact that you are protein malnourished because you are protein malnourished it just causes a lot of problems in your body and i know you're saying to yourself i eat a lot of meat i don't understand how i'm protein malnourished well because you have a very small amount of stomach acid, blood type O has an overabundance of stomach acid. That's why they can eat all that red meat and foods that are high in saturated fats. Blood type A has very little stomach acid. So animal protein and foods that are high in saturated fats do not get digested in your body. And when you're eating these foods and those foods are not digested, you're not getting any of the nutrients and minerals from the food. Okay? So what's happening is the number one thing is cortisol. Okay? Blood type A has a steady stream of cortisol in your blood all day. Okay? Cortisol is your stress hormone. Read this when you get a chance. Cortisol is your is your stress hormone. I've written in back, but now I'll write back further when I get off the lot because now I'm pissed. So because of this steady stream of cortisol in your bloodstream, it makes you guys feel stressed all day, every day. Because of that cortisol, and when you cause your cortisol to be even higher than it naturally is, it sets off a bunch of problems, okay? 
So you have this stress hormone that makes you feel stressed and anxious every day. When you are doing things that make your body stressed out, it's not just external things. The fastest way, the fastest way to stress your body out is to eat food it can't digest. Because now you're putting an undue stress on your organs, which is going to release more cortisol into your bloodstream. So now when your cortisol is high, it also, they say, hey, hey George. Like, there's literally today. The, the thing is today? That's what the notice says. It says July 15th, right? I say cut the bitch down altogether. Fuck it. I don't care. I'm going to ask you if we can just cut it down. Let me tell y'all what's happening. We live directly across the street from the HOA president. It's a mixed family. Black husband, white wife, two biracial kids. That's neither here nor there. We're the only black people in the whole neighborhood. Every other day, it seems like, every week, we're getting a notification in the mail about the shrubbery outside. This bitch all is just sitting around looking at the leaves grow. Every week we're getting a notice about the shrubbery. I ain't seen nobody do shit in their yard. So you paying this much attention to the fucking shrubbery in front of our house. Now mind you, Jordan goes out there and cuts all, we got all the tools. Every couple of weeks he's out there doing this shit. But you are, now you're telling me I need to be on a fucking Zoom. You're telling me I need to be on a fucking Zoom to address the shrubbery issues. Bitch, fuck you. You come over here and cut this shit. If you are dissatisfied. If you are dissatisfied with our bushes, which are fine, you come cut them. And if you have a problem with something I'm doing, bitch, ring the doorbell. Nah, don't ring my doorbell. Don't do it. Don't bring your. Don't you bring your Karen ass over here saying shit about some bushes. I say cut all of them down. I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna ask Pavin if we can just cut the cut the fucking down. If you got such a problem with this big bush with the roses on it, I'll cut the bitch down. You seem to be fixated on the only black people in the neighborhood. You sit around literally watching our shrubbery grow. Oh. So I just wrote back to the guy that we're renting from because the last time this happened, he was like, I hope they don't keep doing this. And I was like, I just wrote him back. I said, it seems like to me, this lady is just sitting at her window watching our shrubbery grow. This is now ridiculous. Cause you ain't got to worry about our bills being paid. Everything in this house is fucking, that man get his rent money early. He don't have no problems with us, but this shit right here, then you want me to get on a fucking zoom. If you got a problem, bitch, when is the meeting? I'll show up in person. I don't need to go on no zoom. It ain't COVID. When's the fucking meeting? Because I'll go up in there and set this shit off. Bitch, if you got a problem with the shrubbery, you come cut it. And I told, I, I, this is what I said to the man the other day. They need to come over and instruct us on what the fuck the bushes need to look like. Give me a picture of what the fuck. If I need to call Edward Scissorhands to make a horse out of the bush, then you come over here and tell me what the fuck the bush is supposed to look like. Let me see when this goddamn Zoom meeting is supposed to be. I, I don't, boy.
when is this Zoom meeting? The 29th. Bitch, kiss my ass. I will, I, if I go out there with this weed whacker motherfucking machine, I will cut this bitch all the way down. I'm telling you right now. You, our bushes offend you, I will, I will cut them down. You ain't got, you ain't got to see them no more. You ain't got to worry about it. He said, let's all go. Everybody, everybody on the live gonna show up at the Zoom meeting. What the fuck is wrong with the shrubbery? I just need to get it out of my system. Y'all know me, I do, I'm not gonna stew about it. I'm not gonna sit up here and, and internalize it and get my blood pressure up. I'll go and knock on this bitch's door. He said, well, they gonna stay at the 29th. Jordy just cut them bushes last week. Jordy just cut them bushes last week. It is 175 degrees outside. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hire somebody to come do the bushes. Let me look on Angie's list today. I'm gonna hire somebody to come and do the fucking bushes. As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna go and knock on their door and get a suggestion of who should be our landscaper. I'm gonna ask her if she do it. Do you do lawns? Go make the bush into a, a perfect square. I want every bush in the yard to be a shape. Triangle, square, circle. So blood type A, here's what we're going. Here's, here's what's happening. <laughs> you said I wish I could go live. If I put on my glasses, I can go live. If I put on my glasses, I can stream our re her reaction. So I'm going to go over there and ask her, what, what's the problem with the bushes? Can you, can you show us? The next time you see that black ass man outside, ask him to come and show you what's wrong with the bushes. You better do it before I do it. Because if I go a fucking cross, I, I promise you if I go across that street. Jordy already had to tell me to calm down at the, at the concert. Jordy was like, no, don't say nothing. I, I, ain't, I ain't fighting tonight. We don't fuck with nobody. And that's the problem. Because they're over there trying to figure out what is it that these black people do that first of all, they can afford to live in this neighborhood. That's the problem. What is it that these black people do? They don't get up and go to work like the rest of us did. So how are they making money to live in this neighborhood? this gated community, and they're the only black people here. That's the problem. You can't find shit else to do to fuck with us but the shrubbery. So we'll, we'll eliminate the shrubbery. If you wanna know what we do, bring your nosy ass over here and fucking ask. Well, what, what do y'all, I notice that y'all don't leave the house and go to work. What is it that you do? Stuff. Mind our business like you should be doing. Minding our businesses like you should be doing. Have a pie ready. I have a pie ready. You're right. Hey, I just wanted to bring you this pie. Blood type A. And I'm blood type AB. This is why I take chill every day. Because shit like that will have me stressed the fuck out every day. I don't like nobody calling my phone. I don't want, want nobody playing on my phone. I don't have no bill collectors calling me. I don't have nobody stressing me the fuck out. This is why I take chill every day. Because you're not going to stress me the fuck out. I created a peaceful place for us to live. I literally thank God every day 
for the level of peace we have in this house. And do you think I'm going to allow anybody to disturb my fucking well-earned peace over some fucking shrubbery? Anywho. So blood type A. Your cortisol. Blood type A and blood type B have the same stress hormones. Y'all have the same fight or flight response. Okay? Jordan is a blood type B. He has a steady stream of cortisol in his bloodstream all day. Jordy has a very hard time relaxing. Okay? Blood type O and blood type AB, our cortisol goes up fast. And then it comes down fast. Okay? So y'all stay ready. We get ready. But it's quick. We go from zero to 60 real fast. Okay? The problem with having y'all's cortisol always in your bloodstream is that it causes your blood sugar to also go up. Okay? Your blood sugar gets elevated because of your cortisol. Okay? So now you have high cortisol and high insulin. Y'all could literally become diabetic from stress. Okay? There were these people in front of us that were just outrageous. They were just too much. They were going, they were over the fucking top. It was ridiculous. We had to literally stand up just to see. I will not, I will not go to another concert at T-Mobile Arena again. Because every other place that I've gone, when we went to see uh Joe C was at the House of Blues. And when we went to see Bruno Mars, it was at um, Park at MGM. So just their seating was better. So even if somebody stood up in front of you, you could still see it. But these people were all doing the absolute most. Fans and all just, uh, yeah. So anyway, when your blood sugar and your cortisol is high, your body now requires more minerals to bring those two things back into balance, okay? So when you're eating foods and your body cannot extract the minerals from the food because it's not digesting the food, your body is left struggling for minerals. This is what is going to call bone, cause bone demineralization, okay? When you have bone demineralization, your body is trying to survive. It's trying to live. So it has to get minerals from wherever it can get them. That is your skeleton. So because you're eating foods that will not fully digest in your body so that your body can extract the minerals that it needs to run properly, it sucks minerals out of your teeth and your bones. So now you end up with osteoporosis, osteopenia, weak teeth, weak bones. Now you gotta have replacement surgeries, hip replacement, knee replacements, cause your body is literally eating your skeleton, which is scary. Another thing that is very, very common for blood type A is that you're predisposed to heart disease. Heart disease is the number one killer in America, okay? What group of people in America has the most heart disease? Put it in the comments. What group of people has the most heart disease in America? Black women. Black women. Okay. The big issue, and, and blood type A makes up 42% of the U.S. population. So you got O, which makes up 44%. Then you have A, which makes up 42%. This is why we have such discourse when it comes to food. Because literally, 55% of the U.S. population benefits from red meat only. 
then the other 45% doesn't benefit from meat at all. Okay? That doesn't mean you should be vegan and vegetarian. It just means you can't have red meat. And no one benefits from chicken. I'm going to let y'all go ahead and accept that before I even get to the chicken part. Okay? So here are the things that blood type A deals with. Ineffective animal protein breakdown. Poor metabolism of saturated fats. Let's turn that lights on. Let's turn on the lights. I was at the concert and forgot to leave the lights on. I had to turn them on for the for the boys. I'm trying to find all the. Ooh. Nope, B is next. So what else? Y'all have a tendency towards higher blood and cell viscosity. That means you have thicker blood and larger than normal red blood cells. How many of you blood type A's have high blood pressure? Put it in the comments. How many of you blood type A's have high blood pressure? This is another thing that is a problem, okay? If you have high blood pressure, a lot of times it's coming from you being insulin resistant, okay? If you're insulin resistant, it causes your arteries and your veins to get smaller and smaller, meaning your arteries and your veins constrict. Not anymore, good, okay? So when your arteries and veins constrict, that puts pressure on your heart, which makes your blood pressure go up. Now, let's combine that with your thick blood, your larger than normal red blood cells. This is what is causing y'all to have blood clots, pulmonary embolisms, DVTs. Have y'all experienced any of those things? Everything can be fixed, ma'am. That's, that's what your mindset needs to always be. Everything that you caused by food can be fixed. Okay, so and then you have bacterial overgrowth. If you have iron deficiencies because you're not eating the right foods. Are you blood type A, fire goddess? Y'all had anemia? I had anemia, horrible anemia before I started eating for my blood type. Horrible. I was eating a bag of ice every day. I just craved ice. From the time I woke up to the time I went to bed, I was eating ice all day, every day. I did not get any Jodeci uh, merchandise, which pissed me off. Because I was gonna get it when we were going in, but I didn't, because the line was too long. Now I was coming out, I totally forgot. I told Jordy I was gonna look for some online. So listen, here are the foods that are your problem foods, okay? What you have to understand is you do not have enough stomach acid to eat animal proteins. There's always somebody that comes here and asks me about this G6 PD deficiency. If you are deficient in anything, it is because you're not eating what you're supposed to be eating. Period. Okay? I go to many concerts. I've already been to three in the past month. Hold on now, let's get into it. Let's get into it, okay? What you cannot ever eat and digest are these foods if you are blood type A. Red meats, beef, lamb, veal, mutton, deer, all of the red meats. You cannot digest them because you don't have enough stomach acid. Pork. Organ meats, crustaceans, lobster and crab. Why? Because lobster and crab is very high in saturated fats. Shellfish, shrimp, crawfish, mussels, oysters, clams. Why? Because those things are very high in saturated fats. No one benefits from seafood, nobody. Seafood is bad for everyone, okay? 
Also, you cannot have no tropical oils. That's avocado oil, coconut oil, palm oil, palm kernel oil. Why? Because they're high in saturated fats. And then industrial oils, corn oil, sunflower, safflower, grape seed, canola. Y'all can't have none of those oils because your body cannot break any of those oils down. And then dairy foods. These things right here are your biggest problem foods. Because no matter how much of this stuff y'all eat, your body cannot digest it. Now you got a bunch of meat sitting in your stomach that is putrefying, creating your acid reflux, creating your bloating, creating all kinds of issues in your body. Let's talk about what's making your blood thick. When you have thick blood, okay, that is what's at the root of your heart disease, okay? Your thick blood and your larger than normal red blood cells. What causes your, you already have naturally thick blood, but there are foods that make your blood even thicker than it already is. Those foods, vinegar, number one thing. Vinegar makes your blood thick. I don't care if it is, ma'am, not everybody can have aspirin. I'm allergic to aspirin. So let me run the live, okay? I can't never have no aspirin. So aspirin is not the, the cure. Yes, I'm highly allergic. Y'all have to stop giving suggestions to people because you don't know what somebody's blood type is. You don't know what somebody's allergic to. I'm allergic to all the whole penicillin family, all the cillins. I'm allergic to all of the pain meds and aspirin. Jordan is allergic to penicillin and all the cillins. Okay? So we have to be careful when we're suggesting these quick fixes to people because it's not a quick fix. It could be a death sentence to somebody. Okay? What's making your blood thicker than it already is? Okay? Vinegar. All the vinegars. Every condiment in your house has vinegar. Y'all are taking vinegar shots. Y'all are cleaning your fruits and vegetables with vinegar. Okay? What else makes your blood thick? Oranges and orange juice. Oranges are extremely dangerous to blood type A. Extremely. Y'all should never be eating no oranges. You should never be a fruititarian. What else makes your blood thick? Dairy foods. What else makes your blood thick? Distilled liquor. And everybody's like, oh, liquor thins out your blood. It does not. It does not. Is that why we get so much heartburn? Yeah. Y'all get a lot of heartburn and acid reflux because you're eating foods that can't digest. Y'all can't have no coconuts because it's high in saturated fats. Coconut does not benefit anybody. It's on everybody's avoids list. I'm sorry. You've been lied to. You've been bamboozled. Not everybody gets heartburn from tomatoes. Okay? Your heartburn and your acid reflux as a blood type A is coming from foods that can't digest because you don't have enough stomach acid. Now the food is sitting in your stomach, just putrefying. That is what's creating the acid reflux, the heartburn, the bloating, the gas. Okay? What else makes your blood thick? Guar gum. Guar gum is in your almond milk. Who was that yesterday that said it's also in your coconut milk or something else? Guar gum. Yeah. Tomato-based foods, orange and the thing about it was, every time I would get sick, I was drinking orange juice. And just crazy heartburn. I don't know anybody that doesn't have heartburn from orange juice. Y'all don't have heart. Y'all have heartburn from orange juice? Yeah. Let's talk about what's giving y'all bad bacterial overgrowth. Okay? 
All of us have bad bacteria in our gut, but blood type A has an overgrowth of it. Number one, the reason why this is so dangerous for y'all. Hi, my love. Hi, my love. What you doing? What you doing, you do? That's had a bath yesterday. That's had a bath yesterday. Get a bath. Get a bath yesterday. Who was that? <laughs> you don't know? He's pretty though, isn't he? He's a handsome guy. He's a handsome guy. He's a handsome, he's a handsome guy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is a handsome. He's a handsome man. Yes, he is. <laughs> he, he just be looking at the, he, whenever he gets in the mirror or the camera, he's just like, who is that? so funny. I use fats on one of the um, for the waterless shampoo fats is the model on that picture on the website. I thought he was model worthy. He's a good looking man. He's a good looking young man. So here is what is creating all of this bad bacteria in your gut as a blood type A. Remember bad bacteria in your gut is what's causing endometriosis, your staph infections, E. coli, H. pylori, urinary tract, yeast infections, your overgrowth of candida, okay? All of that, your, your alopecia, all of your skin issues, and, and the problem with that is y'all have the weakest immune system. This is why y'all create so much mucus. How many of you blood type A's have an overabundance of mucus? So you think. Thank you for the gifts. How many of you blood type A's have a bunch of mucus? The reason that you guys create more mucus than the other blood types is simply because you have a weaker immune system. Mucus protects your immune system. Okay? So be glad that your body is doing what it's designed to do because it's protecting you from all of these infections that y'all are used to getting. Okay? But here is what is creating all of this bad bacteria in your gut. Your thyroid issues come from bad bacteria, your overgrowth of candida, and remember, blood type A is prone to certain cancers. Y'all get more stomach cancer than all the other blood types. Okay? So, potatoes is the number one thing that's creating all this bad bacteria in your gut. Potatoes. White, orange, whatever you call them in your country. Y'all are not supposed to eat potatoes ever. None. Red. Irish, Idaho. Blood type O has the best immune system. Blood type O. Did y'all notice that it was not blood type O that was down with COVID? Blood type O people were surviving COVID. They were not getting COVID. It was very rare for blood type O to get COVID. I've had COVID three times. I've had COVID three times just recently, a month ago. Because y'all have the strongest immune system. Okay? So, potatoes, ground black pepper, navy beans, oranges, again. Kidney beans, lima beans, whey protein shakes. This is what's creating all of that bad bacteria in your gut. You had, but you have, do you have a compromised immune system? I already have a compromised immune system. Okay. But as a blood type AB, we're a hybrid. So we have a pretty weak immune system to begin with. Okay. 
So how do we turn this around for blood type A? The number one thing we need to do is to make intelligent protein choices. What is going to change your life? The same thing that I said about beef with blood type O, this is what is going to change your life if you're a blood type A. Soy, tofu, tempeh, bean curd, texturized vegetable protein, soy curls, soy, 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 soy. Soy is a complete protein. It does not raise your estrogen if you're a blood type A and AB. Blood type O and blood type B can never eat soy. Okay? But blood type A. Soy is super high in iron. This is how I got rid of my anemia. Freaking tofu. Your body rejects soy. I suffer with horrible debilitating pain on it. What's your blood type? What's your blood type, ma'am? I don't believe you. When have you made tofu, ma'am? I'm not talking about the soy that's in your Hidden Valley Ranch. I'm not talking about the soy that you get from Chick-fil-A and Popeyes. I am talking about tofu. When have you made tofu? When have you made soy curls, ma'am? When? As soon as I mention soy, everybody loses their shit. Well, soy is high in estrogen and I get so many problems. So y'all been eating soy y'all whole life. So if you get horrible debilitating pain and you've been eating tofu your whole life, why are you continuing to eat something that's giving you horrible debilitating pain? I do not believe you, ma'am. But whatever. Anyway, tofu will completely change your life. There's always one. There's always one on every live. Okay? Those of you that are suffering from anemia and you are blood type A, your ass needs to get tofu into your body. You can get butler soy curls off of Amazon. You can get, hold on, I got one right here. You can get just like beef. This tastes like when you rehydrate it. I love a tofu scramble. Love it. Love it. If it don't taste like eggs, I'm telling you, it's a texture of eggs. I love, love, love it. But this is texturized vegetable protein. Okay? 25 grams of protein for one cup of this. Once you rehydrate it, it is the texture of ground beef. Okay. Soy is a complete protein just like beef. It has all of the nutrients, all of the minerals that your body needs. Y'all need to be eating tofu every day. Okay. It's super cheap. It's super high in protein. It's super high in iron. And if you have any female issues as a blood type A, soy. Soy is the world's most powerful isoflavone okay i would not lie to you i promise and then i have a 10 minute tutorial on my page that tells you all about tofu the different textures how to prepare it and all of that okay so it's pinned at the top of my page so go and watch the video okay also you benefit from 25 different fish three different types of salmon sardines red snapper there is never a time in your life as a blood type a you should have been lacking protein there's never a time you should have been vegan or vegetarian never okay between tofu and fish that's going to give you all of the protein you need no you can eat steak though i literally said blood type o and blood type b can never have soy I didn't say soya, I said soy. If you could have red meat, why the fuck would you eat tofu? Do you think that if we could eat steak that we would be eating tofu? 
Number one, you cannot cook tofu the same day you buy it. Tofu needs to be frozen. That's why it was a complete failure. And also, you have to press all of the moisture out of the tofu. So, you just cooked a sponge, my guy. When you get your tofu, put it in the freezer. Because that is going to change the whole texture of that tofu. Number two, you must, must, must get a tofu press. Or... There is also a brand of tofu that is pre-pressed. Nay soya tofu is pre-pressed. So when I use nay soya, all I have to do is take it out of the package, press it between some paper towels, and that's all the moisture that I need to take out of it. But if you're buying tofu that's stored in water, you have to get a tofu press. You can get a tofu press off of nay soya. It's N-A-S-O-Y-A. -S okay? Just look on Instacart and see where you can pick it up. That's my that's my favorite when I'm just I have to quickly get it. But my new favorite thing is medium tofu and making a, a tofu scramble. I just season it up, put some walnut oil in the pan. Scramble it up, put that on top of a salad, put some miso dressing on it, and call it a day. Okay? Y'all have to start thinking of food as your medicine. Okay? When I put food on my plate, it's this is medicinal, that's medicinal, that's medicinal, that's medicinal. So I try to combine as many ingredients as I can in one setting because I only eat once a day. So I need to get as many components in this thing as I possibly can. Do I have a tutorial making the scramble on my page? I have videos on my page. It's a scramble. I don't understand. If you take the tofu out of the package and break it up with your fingers, y'all don't need to overthink this thing. It's not rocket science. Take it out. Press the moisture out, crumble it up with your fingers. <laughs> but I do have a tofu scramble video on my page. Okay? So anyway, also, acceptable legumes, beans, and nuts. How do you get rid of inflammation? Eat what you're supposed to eat on your beneficial foods list. Stop. The fastest way to get rid of inflammation in your body is to stop eating the foods that inflame you. That is the answer. And I know that may seem like a very smart and lucky answer, but it's the only answer. You're eating foods that cause your body to feel threatened, which then triggers inflammation to protect your organs. If you stop eating foods that make your body feel threatened, and that are friendly to your body, then the inflammation goes away, okay? What is going to thin out your blood and bring your blood cells back down to their normal size? Lemons, water. As a blood type A, y'all need to be drinking lemon water all day, every day. You need to start your day with lemon water, okay? Start your day with lemon water. Also, pineapples, blueberries, blackberries, green tea. I drink a pot of green tea every day. I don't care if I'm on, the, if I'm on this live or not, okay? Green tea thins out your blood. If y'all just, if y'all just upped your water intake, your blood would thin out, okay? Also, here are the oils that are beneficial to you. Olive oil, flaxseed oil, and walnut oil. If you're gonna be frying tofu, you need walnut oil. I love the flavor of walnut oil. Plus, walnuts are anti-inflammatory. So what is it, what foods does your bacteria love? Escarole, dandelion, chard, rapini, which is broccoli rob, fava beans, prunes, and silver dollar mushrooms. You're allergic to walnuts now? 
Listen, everything that I thought I was allergic to, once I started, once I got my body back together, I'm no longer allergic to. Okay? I suffer as I'm allergic to most fruits, nuts, and raw vegetables. What, what are these allergy symptoms that y'all think y'all have? Y'all just be throwing around allergic Generally, the things that y'all are allergic to are the things you weren't supposed to be eating anyway. There are lots of fruits and vegetables you're not supposed to be eating. So when you get your foods list and you look at the avoid section, I guarantee you most of the shit that you're allergic to is on your avoids list. So hold on now. That's it for blood type A. Where is blood type B? We're moving on to blood type B. So as a blood type A, this is not your full foods list. Click the link on my bio, get your foods list, download it into your phone. Supplements, question mark. I don't understand what you're asking me. Just putting a question mark at the end of a word doesn't tell me anything. What are you asking? Supplements? What does that mean? So blood type B, here's what's going on. You are super sensitive to the lectins in food. All whole foods have lectins. Okay? So when you are super sensitive, no, blood type A, B is next. When you are super sensitive to the lectins in the food, it gives you these symptoms. So if you have any of these symptoms, put it in the comments. Swollen and painful joints, inflammation, bad skin, skin issues, gut issues, neurological symptoms, hormonal fluctuations. That's, those are the things that you suffer from when you're lectin sensitive. Also, liver detox dysfunction. There are foods that mess up your liver function, okay? So there's always people like, oh, what can I do for a liver cleanse and this, that, and the other? And I'm like, but if you're still eating the foods that are giving you liver problems, you doing a liver cleanse ain't gonna do nothing. You've got to know which foods you're supposed to be eating, okay? And then hyper assimilator tendencies. Being a hyper assimilator means that your gut breaks down starches turns them into sugar and stores them as fat because of a particular bacteria in your gut. Blood type B has more of that particular uh, bacteria than all the other blood types. This is also why you could be diabetic. How many of you are diabetic as a blood type B? Blood type B has the largest population of diabetics in the world. And an unbalanced gut. What foods are at the roots of your problems as a blood type B? The number one thing that is causing problems in your life is chicken. Blood type B and blood type AB can never, ever eat chicken. It doesn't matter if that chicken is organic or ghetto. It doesn't matter if you raise it in your house next to your kids and you give them an allowance every Friday. It's still chicken. And there is a lectin in the meat of chicken that attacks your bloodstream, causing your red blood cells to clump together, creating blood clots, pulmonary embolisms, and autoimmune diseases, as well as stroke. Chicken will kill you. No one benefits from chicken, nobody. And if chicken was so fantastic, how come it's not beneficial to us? Now let me tell you about this chicken. Today's chicken has been genetically modified to have higher levels of estrogen so that the chicken grows faster to meet demand so now, every single time you sit up and eat a rotisserie chicken from the Walmart or the Sam's Club, 
you're just eating a whole bucket of estrogen. How many of y'all have an autoimmune disease? Put your autoimmune disease in the comments. Put your autoimmune disease in the comments. Fifty million Americans has at least one autoimmune disease. Fifty million. Out of those fifty million, eighty percent are women. If you have lupus, MS, or rheumatoid arthritis, it's ninety percent women. Why do you think that is? Take a big wild guess why it's mostly women that have autoimmune diseases. Put in the comments what your guess is. Estrogen. Autoimmune diseases feed on estrogen. Sarcoidosis is not an autoimmune disease, it is an inflammatory disease. Okay? Autoimmune diseases feed on estrogen. This is why we have more and more autoimmune diseases every day. Because you're continuing to eat chicken. Okay? So listen to the story of chicken. Back in the day, it used to take 112 days for a chicken to grow to two and a half pounds. Now, it only takes five weeks for a chicken to grow to six and a half pounds. It only takes 42 days for a chicken to grow to slaughter weight. So the chickens that you guys are eating are really chicks. How can you have estrogen-free eggs when you have estrogen-filled chickens? Go look it up. Eggs are high in estrogen. Turkey is high in estrogen. Because estrogen is a growth hormone. This is also why these chickens are creating growths in your body. How many of y'all got fibroids? How many of y'all have PCOS? Those are growths. Cysts, men with breasts, those are growths. Estrogen creates growths in your body because estrogen is a growth hormone. Now, ask yourself why your daughters are starting their periods at seven, eight, nine years, 10 years old. Why are your daughters getting their periods at seven? eight, nine, ten, because they have been eating chicken since they got those two front teeth. And they've been eating chicken three, four, five days a week their entire lives. And it's very common for black and Hispanic girls to start their periods between seven and ten. It's not very common for white girls to start their periods between seven and ten. Because white people don't consume as much chicken as black people and Hispanic people. And at the root of our culture, black and Hispanic, is chicken and pork. This is also why black people and Hispanic people are the sickest people in the country. Because of a culture that was put upon both of us. 50% of Hispanics are diabetics. 50%. No one is supposed to be eating chicken or pork ever. Pork is naturally toxic to the human body, naturally. Chicken doesn't benefit anybody. So if you are a man that consumes a lot of chicken, your estrogen is going to be high. Anything that raises your estrogen as a man automatically lowers your testosterone. Did you know that if a man is overweight, his body automatically converts his testosterone into estrogen? 
So when you see a man walking around with a big beer belly, that is an estrogen belly. It didn't come from beer. Because most of those guys aren't drinking beer. When you see a man with big man boobs, that's estrogen. And when a man's estrogen is high, it triggers type 2 diabetes and prostate cancer. How many, how many men y'all know got type 2 diabetes? Anything that raises your estrogen lowers your testosterone. You know what else raises your estrogen? Oats. Oats. What else? Liquor. What else? If your blood type B and O, soy. What else? Stress. What else raises your estrogen if your liver is not functioning properly? So think about how many chicken restaurants and liquor stores you have in your neighborhood. Because all of this is by design. As long as you continue to eat that chicken, you're going to be sick. And then that drives you to the doctor so you can get on those diabetes drugs. And all the rest of the drugs. Okay? If you want to get rid of your fibroids, stop eating chicken. If you want to correct your PCOS, stop eating chicken. If you want to get rid of your autoimmune disease, stop eating anything that raises your estrogen levels. 70% of all women in America over the age of 35 has estrogen dominance. 70%. What's the number one meat in America? Chicken. It's all connected, sweetheart. And it's all by design. These people know exactly what this chicken is doing in our body. They know how toxic it is. They know exactly what diseases it's going to cause. They know exactly what's doing, what it's doing. And that is just selling more drugs. So what else is causing you to have lectin sensitivity? All the swollen and painful joints and inflammation and all of that. They're not killing you. Your food choices are killing you. Because no one is forcing you to eat chicken. If you sit back right now and think about your favorite foods, I guarantee you that's what's at the root of your illness. It's not so much that it's addictive as it is accessible and cheap. Ask yourself why they make this shit so cheap. All the shit that is super cheap is deadly. Potatoes, chicken, those are the two things that come to my corn. Those are the two th the three things that come to my mind very quickly. Chicken, potatoes, bread, cheap, cheap wheat. Okay. The more accessible it is, the more dangerous it is. So here are the things that are causing all of those symptoms, the neurological problems, the hormonal fluctuations. Chicken, chicken fluctuates your estrogen. Corn fluctuates your insulin. Buckwheat, wheat, sesame, amaranth, all falls under wheat. That fluctuates your dopamine and your serotonin. These are the hormonal fluctuations, okay? Soy fluctuates your estrogen rye falls under wheat these are the things you can never eat as a blood type b what's causing your liver to get jacked up lentils black beans black eyed peas mung beans artichokes and aloe when jordan lived in turkey he was eating he was so big jordan got him to 267 he was eating lentil soup every day so his estrogen was through the roof. Chicken, lentils, all the shit he wasn't supposed to be eating. Let's talk about this hyper assimilator tendency that blood type beats uh, has. My landlord just wrote back and said our neighbors are our neighbors are ridiculous. That they're being absolutely ridiculous. So I need him to go have a conversation with them before I do. 
Because I'm going to tell them I'm going to cut these bushes down. They ain't going to have nothing else to worry about. You got a problem with the bushes? Let's just get rid of the bushes. A hyper assimilator means that you have a particular strain of bacteria in your gut that breaks down digestive resistant starches, turns them into sugar and stores them as fat. Then when you go to the doctor, the doctor will diagnose you with diabetes. Okay. Then he prescribes you drugs that are classified as ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors are drugs that inhibit that bacteria called alpha glucosidase. So the reason that you're diabetic is because of a particular one strain of bacteria that's in your gut. And here are the foods that are creating that bacteria. Peanuts, this is what you're never supposed to eat as a blood type B. Peanuts, tomatoes, soy, cashews, corn, cornstarch, ground black pepper, poppy seeds, pinto beans, maltodextrin, and rhubarb. This right here could be why you're diabetic. What is unbalancing your guts? Sorghum, peanuts, dextrose, sucrose, carrageenan, distilled liquor, and acacia. Walnuts are not that bad for y'all. But y'all are really not the nut people. Okay? The only people that benefit from peanuts is blood type A and blood type AB. O and B is not supposed to have no peanuts. Okay? So how do we turn this around as a blood type B? What is going to block that lectin sensitivity with the painful joints and all of that stuff? Cultured dairy products. Sour cream, Greek yogurt, ricotta cheese, kefir, cottage cheese, mozzarella cheese, feta cheese, and paneer. The reason that blood type B benefits from certain cultured dairy products is because you have the B antigen on your red blood cells. Okay? Are you a blood type B? I didn't say you couldn't have walnuts. Walnuts are okay for everybody. Go look at your foods list. The reason that blood type B benefits from certain cultured, that is the operative word, dairy products is the B antigen, antigens are just little sugars on the outside of our red blood cells, is the same antigen that's in cow's milk. Okay? Blood type B is the most balanced of all the blood types. They can have a little bit of everything. Okay? So, the sugar that's in dairy is called lactose. The technical name is galactose. So the sugar that's in milk is the same sugar that's on our red blood cells. If you have the B antigen, you benefit from certain cultured dairy products. These dairy products act like probiotics and prebiotics in your gut, okay? What is the protein that benefits blood type B? You're not lact lactose intolerant means that you, you're intolerant to the sugar, ma'am. Lactose is sugar. You're intolerant of sugar. Okay, most of the, sh most of the cheese and dairy that y'all are buying at the grocery store, 95% of it is trash. It's not even real. It's not real dairy because they've removed all the cultures from it. So if you're eating pasteurized cheese, Colby, Cheddar, Monterey Jack, all of that is fake cheese. That's not real cheese. All the cultures, the living cultures, have been removed through the pasteurization process. You know what's left in it? Sugar. That's why it's trash. Okay? You're not lactose intolerant to cultured dairy products. Y'all think because y'all can't eat ice cream without getting the bubble guts that y'all lactose intolerant. You shouldn't be eating no ice cream to begin with. Ice cream doesn't benefit you because it's just straight sugar. 
okay? Here are the proteins for blood type B. Blood type B is the other red meat eating blood type. Lamb, goat, venison, deer, mutton, rabbit. Y'all benefit from all the other red meats except beef. Okay? All the other red meats. Jordan, as soon as he started eating according to his blood type, immediately dropped 60 pounds. Okay? Yeah, lamb tonight. He, I can smell a lamb roast in the oven right now. Okay? All Jordan was eating was that tomatoless chili that he would make with ground lamb and ground venison and lamb roast. And all of that inflammation went away. 60 pounds gone, all the pain in his knees gone, all the pain in his shoulder gone. All that inflammation went away, okay? So what fish is highly beneficial for you guys? Halibut, cod, mackerel, sardines. That's not all the fish you guys benefit from, but those are top of the line, okay? What is going to improve your liver function? Mustard greens, beet greens, green tea, licorice root tea. I always have green tea and licorice root in this pot, okay? Parsnips, curry powder, ginger root. Y'all could literally lose weight and change your life with curried lamb and curry goat, okay? And what is going to blunt that alpha glucosidase bacteria in your gut? Mushrooms, silver dollar, enoki, and maitake mushrooms. Whey protein shakes, blueberries, Brussels sprouts, blackberries, and grapes, okay? And what food does your bacteria love? Brewer's yeast, molasses, and cabbage. Okay, so get into kimchi if you're blood type B. That is it for blood type B. This is not the full foods list. This is just what foods will trigger ailments in your body and what foods will reverse ailments in your body. So click the link on my bio, download your foods list, start tomorrow. I guarantee you that a week from now, you'll be seven to 10 pounds lighter than you are today because it is going to release that inflammation you've made some kimchi i want to make kimchi i just don't have the time for all of it i need a sous chef to chop everything up i just i don't have time so i just buy it my favorite kimchi i usually get from kroger it's not called kroger here i think it's called smith's but they have a brand of kimchi that i love 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 because it kind of tastes like pickles Yes, we've already done blood type O. We start with blood type O every day. So where is blood type AB? This is the last blood type. Where is blood type AB? This is my blood type too. You had some basmati rice and some lamb. Fantastic. Okay. Kimchi is a lot of work. I'd rather just buy it. The second, um, they have a good kimchi at Costco. I have a big jar of Costco kimchi in there um, you know what it damn. who can have it blood type B you can have it if you get some bulgogi like Costco has this already made bulgogi so it already has the beef and the sauce and the onions put that in your pan and cook it and add some kimchi to it and put some mozzarella cheese on top When I tell you, now you can actually do that with some lamb, okay? You can do that with some lamb too. If you just slit, thinly slice up your lamb, bulgogi, it's beef. You can't have it all the time because you don't benefit from beef. It's in your neutral section. But once in a blue moon, Go get you some bulgogi, bulgogi. It's Korean, it's Korean beef from Costco. Treat yourself once in a while. Get you some kimchi, 
mix it all together, and put you some mozzarella cheese on top. Mm. It's your daughter's favorite dish. Jordan and I love Korean barbecue. Korean barbecue. We will go to Korean barbecue in the RV. Okay. So where is blood type AB? I am blood type AB negative. So this applies to me also. Okay. So here are the things that we deal with. Bacterial overgrowth, cell signaling issues, stress, and lectin sensitivities. Blood type AB is a hybrid of A and B. Hey Malika. So we have both A and B antigens on our red blood cells. So here are the foods that are jacking us up. Number one thing, chicken. Korean barbecue is the best value on the planet. That is the best value on the planet. You just pay one fee, come in and eat all you want. All them side dishes. The best. Chicken. The same thing that, that the lectins do to blood type B is the same thing it does to us. It attacks our bloodstream, causing our red blood cells to clump together, creating blood clots, pulmonary embolisms, autoimmune diseases, and stroke. Okay? We can never eat chicken. Chicken was literally at the root of all of my health problems. All of them. Because I'm going through menopause. I'm in my, I'm almost in my fifth year of menopause. In 2025, it'll be five years. But my first two years were horrific. I was bleeding profusely. I had all of the symptoms. The night sweats, the hot flashes, the mood swings the weight gain, the irritability, my body hurt from top to bottom every day. What was causing all of that to happen? Me eating chicken three, four times a week. When I stopped eating chicken, all of those symptoms went away. Every last one of them. I don't have hot flashes. I don't have night sweats. I don't have none of that shit. So when people or women are talking about, oh, menopause, and I take this for this, and that, that, Ma'am, if you're still eating chicken, that's why you have these issues. The fastest way for you to get rid of those menopause symptoms is to stop eating something that is pumping estrogen into your body every day. Menopause is the body's release of estrogen. So why are you filling your body up with estrogen? Also, this is what y'all can go you look up. When you are post-menopause, and you are eating things that increase your estrogen, that's how you trigger breast cancer. And then y'all out here doing hormone replacement therapy. Menopause is to rid the body of estrogen. Why are you replacing it? And then when you get breast cancer, you're like, but I don't understand why I have breast cancer. Menopause is nature's way of depleting your body of estrogen that it no longer needs. You're not having no damn kids in your 60s. You do not need the estrogen. Let it go. Well, they say that you look younger when you have it. I look younger than most of y'all and I'm 55. I'm in my fifth year of menopause, sweetheart. I can't wait for all the estrogen to be gone. I cannot wait. They said the best time in a woman's life is post-menopause. I can't wait to see what that's like. Okay? So, what else is jacking us up? Chicken, corn, haddock. How are you feeling since you stopped eating chicken in the last two months? Put in the comments how y'all feel since y'all stopped eating chicken. And the thing is, nobody knows how hurtful chicken is until you stop eating it. You don't realize what chicken is doing to you until you stop eating it. Less mucus. Hi. Said you're calmer. Me too. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it. Less hormonal. 
I was, my hormones were, were I was, I don't know how anybody dealt with me. What you mean you're only on fish? What's your blood type? Ma'am, if you're a blood type O, you need to be eating beef. It has nothing, beef is going to help you, okay? Your monthly is regular instead of two week. Mine is gone. Thank you. But when I had, when I was eating chicken, I bled for 45 days straight, heavy, heavy. I thought I was dying. Chicken. So what else is jacking us up as a blood type AB? Chicken, corn, haddock, flounder, kidney beans, mung beans, chickpeas. Come on guys, tap the screen. Let's get to 100,000. I never really had irregular periods. They would be heavy, like heavy. The first two or three days, chicken. Because every woman that has stopped eating chicken said that their period is not as heavy as it used to be. Okay? Chickpeas, we cannot eat chickpeas. It immediately causes us to become inflamed. Chickpeas also do the same things in our body that corn does. Chickpeas stop insulin production in your body. That's exactly why your period changed. Because you're not pumping a bunch of estrogen into your body. Okay? Also, we cannot have sesame, sunflower seeds, lima beans, black beans, fava beans, black-eyed peas, and buckwheat. You didn't realize it was a chicken? Yep. Now please, if you stop eating chicken, please make sure your kids have stopped eating chicken. Okay? Mine was heavy and the cramps were unbearable. I would always cramp like the first couple of days. Just, I'll be seeing some people, like my niece, I remember came in the kitchen one day just crying from period pain. I just felt so bad for her. And that's why I said, y'all don't realize how much damage the chicken is doing until you stop eating it. We're being bamboozled. So, what is giving us the bad bacterial overgrowth? Number one thing, oranges. Them damn, I, them damn oranges. Oranges and orange juice. Camembert cheese, bananas, distilled liquor, dextrose, sucrose, fructose, guar gum, guava, mangoes, carrageenan, cornstarch, sago, edzuki beans, radishes, rhubarb, sorghum, and Jerusalem artichokes. Remember, bad bacteria in your gut is responsible for endometriosis, all of your skin problems, yeast infections, urinary tract infections, your thyroid problems, all of that. Hi, thank you. Okay, your endometriosis, your alopecia, all of that's from bad bacteria. What is stressing out and unbalancing our immune system? Okay, remember last week when I couldn't come on here because I had accidentally eaten some pork? Oh, show Jordan's transformation? Hold on. Let me show you Jordan's transformation. Ah, here it is. No exercise, no diet products, no detox teas. He just stopped eating the food he wasn't supposed to eat and started eating the food he was supposed to eat. And his body just transformed. Hair started growing like weed, skin cleared up. Chicken, lamb. Chicken, lamb. Look at the skin. 
Jordan has battled acne his entire life since he became a teenager until he was 30. Always had acne. Used every product on the market, nothing ever helped. What was the problem? Chicken. When he stopped eating that chicken, skin cleared up, hair start his hair his his hair had started to get real thin at the top. Hair wouldn't grow, beard wouldn't connect. Now his hair is down to the middle of his back. So you're wondering why your hair won't grow? You wonder why your skin won't clear up? Okay. So what is stressing us out? Our immune system and making our immune system unbalanced. What to replace chicken? Go get your foods list. It tells you what meats benefit you. Chicken doesn't benefit any blood type. Pork does not benefit any blood type, okay? We've already passed blood type A. Go get your foods list. It tells you exactly what you're supposed to be eating. Click the link on my page, okay? So what unbalances our immune system is sorghum, sucrose, dextrose, carrageenan, distilled liquor, acacia, coffee, aspartame, and pork. Your lymphatic system needs 100%. I don't know what that means. So how do we turn this around as a blood type AB? To block the lectin sensitivity, yogurt, feta cheese, farmer's cheese, mozzarella cheese. Oh, yay. We'll get back up. We'll get back up to the 200s. You know, every time I get booted off of TikTok, I got to build my way back up. I accidentally ate some pork the other day. Made me sick as a dog. I had eaten some kimchi stew from a restaurant, not knowing that the base of the soup was pork. And when I tell you, the nausea was unrelenting okay sometimes I get caught I get caught and not paying attention you gotta be vigilant okay we have a lymphatic system which most call okay so listen what is the protein that we benefit from? How did I found, found out? I, ha, I looked on the website. I looked on the website at the menu at the ingredients because all I saw was kimchi stew. And I love kimchi stew. Looked on the website at the ingredients and it said pork base. And I was like. Because I. After I had eaten, I started feeling bad like immediately. And I was like, what the fuck? Why, why am I feeling like this? That's why. Because anytime I eat pork, I feel like I'm coming down with the flu. So the next day, I woke up runny nose, whole bodies aching. It was terrible. On top of the nausea. So as a blood type B, AB, we cannot mess with no pork ever okay so here are the proteins for blood type a b turkey we're the only blood type that benefits from turkey okay cod eggs tuna salmon sardines grouper tofu and tempeh i don't eat as many eggs as i would love to eat because today's eggs are higher in estrogen than they used to be so I'm not trying to do nothing that's going to raise my estrogen levels. So I just don't mess with them. What is going to improve our cell signaling? Cells carry messages throughout the body. Those messages tell the body what processes to do. An example of that would be a cell signaling your brain to release more insulin into your bloodstream. There are foods that throw that off. The stuff that's unbalancing our immune system throws off our cell signaling. Okay. What improves our cell signaling? Watermelon, curry powder, figs, garlic, onions, cranberries, green tea, eggplant, cherries, plums, 
olive oil, peanuts, walnuts, walnut oil, and blackberries. I try to get at least three to five of these in my system every day. I got a new watermelon today. I got some more cherries today. I drink green tea every day. Walnut oil. I try to work that in with whatever I'm cooking. Okay. So I try to get as many of these medicinal things in my system as I can. And what is going to make our bacteria happy? Mushrooms, silver dollar, portobello, enoki, and maitake. Miso, cabbage, kefir, amaranth, dandelion greens, watercress, and brewer's yeast. So this is not our full foods list. This is just what ailments are we prone to, what foods trigger those ailments, and what foods will reverse them. So click the link on my bio. Yeah, yeah. I love some miso soup. Love, 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 love miso soup. Okay. Click the link on my bio. Download your foods list. Start tomorrow. I guarantee you by this time next week, if you're only eating the beneficial foods, you will lose seven to 10 pounds of inflammation. But more importantly, you're going to feel better than you have in decades. Your sleep is going to be better. Your mood is going to be better. Your energy is going to be better. Everything's going to be better. Okay? We're done. Yay! Y'all were so good today. Y'all were so good. We'll be back again tomorrow. Come say goodnight, fats. Come here. Some, come say goodnight. Come here, fats. Come here. Come say goodnight. <laughs> I want you to say goodnight to everybody. You ready to eat? Wanna go eat? All right. All right, guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. Mm, take care of yourself, sis. Sorry to hear about your brother. Okay? I'll see y'all tomorrow.